Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today I'm really excited, I'm bringing you a new product we're making. These are these 3D flowers um, and leaves and butterflies and things. Uh, as you can see, we are now using flame work to create some fantastic inclusions that you can add to your pieces and make them kind of more 3D and popping out a bit more. Um, we have, let me show you, this, this, there are two versions. So first of all, when I did it, I did this one, which um, went a bit flat, it didn't keep its shape. And then I tried it on a second version here. And as you can see, I worked out a way of keeping its shape really well. I'm gonna put those to one side and show you the products. Um, so what we have is we have green leaves, which fantastic, they've got the kind of texture of the leaf on them. Um, and then we have um, flowers and we've got two different sizes. We've got this, the smaller ones and the larger ones. And then we also have these butterfly wings, um, which is like this, which you can then put on in, in 3D. I'll show you those better in a minute. The prices for these are for the flowers, whether big or little, because it's not so much about the glass, it's about the time they take to make. It's nine euros for 10 pieces, and that's um, uh, seven, 720 without VAT. Um, and then for the butterfly wings, it is going to be um, 10 pieces for 12 euros. They are really hard to make, we have to kneel them, they're you know, really tricky, and that's a 960 without VAT. Um, check them out. These are not probably things you're going to use so much in commercial projects. If you're trying to kind of make lots of pieces for people for, for, um, to sell, they're quite expensive. But for a particular special piece for someone, um, I've, there will be clips of a uh, of a panel I've made for my house that's going in, and I've you know put loads of these flowers on, and it looks amazing in that. But um, they are fantastic, and the effect you get is brilliant. Um, here's one. You can see we've done that needs to just go back in the kiln a little bit. Um, and you can see to keep the shape, we stuff them with fibre paper that then we take out after they're fired with our masks on um, to keep the shape. And then you get this can totally um, amazing kind of 3D effect. And we've also added a little bit of stringers in to get the kind of stamen of the plant. Um, so I'm going to show you a little project now using all of these products. Uh, I've cut a piece of glass, just sort of um, as a piece of variegated green I had. I quite like this side with a, it's um, almost like a sort of landscapey feeling. Um, I'm going to use all the all the bits I've got, so uh, you can really see how it it is. So I've decided I want to put a kind of branch up in the top right hand corner. Um, I've cut a piece of uh, brown glass, and I'm just going to kind of put it on like this and then I've got some of these leaves. Now what's quite nice with this is if you put a bit of fibre paper under some of them and I've got a piece of six mil fibre paper here but I'm actually sort of pulling it off a bit because I, you know, I want it quite organic. If, you, if it's too um, just square, if you cut it with scissors, it, it, you know, the, the way the uh, leaves mould over it isn't so nice. And then I'm just going to place the leaves it's quite tricky to get the um, fibre paper out afterwards, but really well worth it. Um, I'm very lucky I have a compressor. So I used a, um, uh, a air gun to push the, push the uh, fibre paper out, wearing a mask, obviously. Um, I'm gonna put another bit here. The only thing I need to think about is where I'm gonna put some little flowers. So I'm just gonna take a wedge out of that one now. down a bit. So I might even have it coming off the edge of the, the, the um, pit here and when I put it in the kiln I'll put some fibre paper underneath it um, and it will all be nice. So there's that one, another one here. Um, so now with the, because I want to start thinking about the flowers as well. Um, 
with the flowers when you when you sort of do them let's say you've got a flower like this my way of um, making them is to put some um, stringers in a stamen and then stick a bit of fiber paper in to do that I put a bit of the um, bullseye glass tack gel glue in the bottom just a little bit and then with Oh, sorry, my tweezers have decided to. With tweezers, I'm going to just get a few bits of stringers like this. I'm doing five in them because there's sort of five petals, if you see, on the flower. And then I can just put the five bits of stringer, kind of each one laying inside one of the petals. It just helps them stick a bit better. That one's a little bit long. And then putting a bit of fiber paper in and sort of just pushing it in to hold, and then it will hold its shape. So I've done some white ones here with yellow stamen, and um, I'm gonna put them on the tree like bl blossoms of the tree. So, one there. And I need to make sure that the fibre paper isn't, you know, that everything's getting a good stick. It, that the fibre paper is keeping parts of the, um, of it up. But it's making sure, I'm still making sure that there's a good um, surface area uh, for like this leaves to stick to because otherwise it's not going to have anywhere to stick to. So I'm just going to put these leaves on. So now I want to add um, the stringers um, to the flowers. I'm just putting them on like this just using a bit of gel glue to hold them in shape it's quite um if you've got a stringer that's kind of sitting up like this it's quite hard to know where it's going to fall when it melts for your flowers to be attached to so it's sort of better off using one that's um a little bit flatter um and then i've got these flowers i'm just going to put three on each one um i get them you know not the cheapest things in the world these but um very effective So I'm adding a couple more um, over this side. You know, I'm putting a lot on because I really want to show you guys what these look like and um, show you how kind of fab they can be. But, you know, you could just literally put one, um, you know, the frame with, and use these just as a little bit of kind of um, detail in, you know, in one corner and have just a little bit of 3D flower in one corner. Um, now I want to just add a butterfly. So I've got some of these blue coloured wings here. So, I have my... so you can either do your butterflies like this and the nice thing you can do again is to use a bit of fibre paper underneath the butterfly wing. Make sure you don't get all the way to the end but just sort of um, a bit in so that you leave some of the wing is touching the glass. Butterfly bits on. Mm. Okay, when I'm not being filmed, I'll get those right because whenever I am being filmed, it's hard. And then I'm also going to put one, so you can also do them as a single wing. 
um, like onto a flower or something. So I'm going to do a single wing like that. I'm just going to use a bit of gel glue to stick it all down because it helps with stopping moving. And again, making sure my butterfly this part of it is touching. Okay, so that's on like that. Um, now, so now I've got these main bits on, I'm going to sort of do my pimping up bit. So for me, I want to put some, uh, this is the uh, mint and eventing green I always use in landscapes. Down the bottom here. some of the smaller, that's the extra large, this is the medium. Just around. I'm going to use some pea pod. I'm actually going to use some pea pod up here just to Now, bits landed on my butterfly and I will clear that off afterwards because it'd be weird to have a butterfly with green um, green spots on it. Um, I've got some adventuring medium. Uh, this is the light adventuring. And then I just want to add a bit of colour as well. Um, this is dense white medium for it. And we have some fuchsia. Fuchsia is expensive. It is really expensive. But I've had this jar for now three years. And I use it in most of my landscapes. And this is how much I got you left. In fact, I must buy some more. Um, uh, it just gives a really lovely kind of beautiful colour. In fact, on these flowers is fuchsia. Um, so regarding the colour of the flowers you want to order, we're going to have them on the website in kind of, you know, your sort of primary and um, rainbow colours, so there'll be a, a blue, a green, a um, red, orange, yellow, pink, purple, white, black, probably in French vanilla. And you can, you know, order them in large or, or small. Um, and then if there's a particular colour, like I really want canary yellow flowers, you then in the notes at checkout say, you know, please can I have canary yellow. And as long as we have the stock, we will give you that. If we don't, we'll come back to you and say, I'm sorry, we don't have that. We can offer you this. And then if you don't want them, of course, we'll refund. Um, or we can say we can get the stock in in X amount of time. So um, that's, you know, that's how they'll work because, you know, there's infinite combinations. So you can have sim single colour or you can say, I like a variegated. So these ones are variegated petal pink with fuchsia. Um, these ones were Caribbean blue with, you know, weirdly with um, like French vanilla, but they've got a lot of clear clear in them. Um, I think this was just a scrap rod we had. Uh, yeah, so you could, there's just so many combinations, but if you, you know, looking, if there's a flower out there you like, send us a photograph and say, I'm looking for something that, you know, these kind of colors and we can see what you can do. Um, in the photographs, you know, at the end, we're going to show you some lots of photographs and video of the big panel I've made. And you'll see I've used some transparent ones, which look amazing. Um, so also do, don't think of just uh, your opal colours, you know, there's transparent colours as well. You could, you know, you can choose and go from or mixing, um, you know, like with this, this is a transparent um, fuchsia with an opal. So they've sort of got a, a transparent and opal feel to them. So there's lots and lots of different kind of ones you can do and you just um, tell us what your favourite is and we'll make them. Um, they will all be made to order so they do, we only will be doing them on Monday so all orders will go out on Tuesdays because we will anneal them over kind of Monday evening and they will go on Tuesdays and um, so there will be a little bit more of a delay on those going out to make it cost effective we will just make them once a week. Um, so I think this is ready to go in the kiln um and we will see i can't wait to show you guys how it looks when it comes out 
So here it is out of the kiln. I went to 740, um, which weirdly in this kiln is too hot. So I've lost some of the detail. You'll see in the photographs of the other times I've used the leaves, they've still got the um, imprint of the leaf. And these have gone a bit flat. Um, whereas as you see in this one, they're standing up much more. So it's really knowing your kiln. I haven't used um, this kiln for this kind of thing in a while. I've been using my bigger one at the back, which runs a bit cooler. And I forgot, but I couldn't remake the project, but I wanted to get it to you today because I'm so excited because it's Black Friday and uh, we're having a free postage. So if anyone wants to buy anything today, we're going to have a free postage till next Friday, um, end of day. So if you want to buy anything, you get free postage anywhere in the world. Yippee! So that's our Black Friday for you. Um, so I would have, you know, normally remade it. Unfortunately, these two went in together. Um, this one that I'm sort of putting in this wooden stand. This is another way of, of mounting things, a wooden stand. Remember, if you're using a wooden stand, watch out of your kind of width you've got at the back. I've actually got a little bit of frit that's a bit too wide, so I may have to rethink it and decide to put it in a in a um, frame in the end. So cleaning this up, let's have a go. Um, wear a mask, guys, wear a mask. I'm holding on to Henry, my hoover. Oop, hit myself in the face with the mask. So make sure your masks are snugly on. Um, now I might, you know, you need to choose your pokey weapon. Um, I always do this with Henry on, so you're not going to be able to hear me and I'm just going to get Miller to kind of go in close and film. You can see there's still a little bit of residue under various places. Now I'm lucky that I have a compressor and therefore an air gun and I'm going to air gun this off with a mask on obviously because it's going to put um, fiber paper everywhere and I have it in a back room where we don't you know I can then close the door and let the dust settle and we don't tend to go in there without masks on because it's where we keep the dusty stuff. Um, so uh, but if you don't have that you might have to get in here with a little bit of a toothbrush give it a really good wash and slowly get this stuff out with a kind of soft um, uh, brush. I also think this bit sticking up here doesn't kind of work, so I'm just gonna knock that off a little bit. So I'm gonna clear this up and then I'll bring it back to you. So here's the final piece. Um, I love the way it hangs off the edges here. I really like that um, detail. Um, I put a bit of fiber paper on to hold it up. Um, I love the butterfly wings kind of sticking up. Um, and the stamen and the flowers look fantastic. They have lost a bit of detail, as I said, I went hotter than I would have liked. 740 seems to work on my other kiln, but on this one it's just a bit too hot. And that's about knowing your kilns, guys, which we should all know. And um, I seem to have forgotten. Um, I hope you love this um, and like these products we're bringing to you. And if you like this video, please subscribe.